Hey guys, welcome back. So this is the last video for JavaScript algorithms and data structures projects and we're going to write a cache register. Okay, so for this one I have already uh, written my code and I'm going to go through it line by line with you. Okay, it's easier that way because it's a bit more complicated and there are more edge cases. Now, what we need to do is we need to design a cache register drawer function check a cache register that accepts a purchase price as the first argument and it will be price. Uh, the second argument is cache uh, and the cache in drawer CID as the third argument. CID is a 2D array listing uh, available currency. Now the check cache register function should always return an object with the status key and the change key. The three statuses are insufficient funds, closed and open. And the change should have uh, all the change but split into different currencies. Uh, sorry, different denominations of currencies. And the currency units, here we have a penny is one cent, uh, a nickel is five cents, a dime is uh, ten cents and so on. Now, um, Let's see, what I have done here, I first started by creating an object currency unit where we can have as property the denomination like penny, nickel, dime, quarter and as value, its value. So for penny, we, I have put 1 and not 0 0.01 and I did that because it's easier to work with whole numbers, with integers in JavaScript because if you use floats, you will encounter some, uh, some math issues in JavaScript, but uh, for me, I found it easier to just multiply everything by 100 since we don't need, uh, so in, in the end we can still convert it into cents. So that's all I have done here. I have taken 0 0.01 and multiplied it by 100. So I created this object currency unit and I have all the currency units and its value. Okay, so it's easier to access. If I want to know the value for a penny, I just do currency unit bracket penny to use the bracket notation. Now, so that's all there is to it for this part. Now, let's see the function where everything happens. We have the function check cache register. First, I calculate uh, the difference between the cash that I receive and the price of the product, so I know what change I need to return. And as I said, I'm, I multiply everything by 100, so we have only integers, so we can work only with integers. So here we calculate the change. I call this change sum. Now, right here, I have just copied the value of the change sum and called it change sum check. The reason I do this is because I need to, to store this change sum somewhere. And since, since I will modify this below, to perform some calculations, I just need to save a copy. And still, still uh, right here I initiate change, which will be a 2D array, so I initiate it as an empty array and the status as an empty string. Now, um, I initiate a value for CID sum, so I want to calculate and store in this variable the sum of all the money in, uh, in the register. Okay, to do that I just have to go through all the, uh, just, just to get the sum of everything in there. Now, filtered CAD, I am filtering the uh, cache in drawer, the CAD array, because when you get the CAD, as you can see here in some examples, you can, um, you can also receive Yep, okay, right here. Here is a perfect example. We receive the cache in drawer uh, only, um, so we get also some currency denominations with zero, with a value of zero. So we have zero nickels, zero quarters, zero fives. So I don't want to check them because uh, they have no value. So since we have no nickels, why bother going through them? That's what I'm doing right here. I'm just getting an array of uh, cash in drawer, but I am removing uh, the denominations that have zero. Okay? And I am reversing them. The reason I reverse them is that when, because when you uh, enter the CID, usually uh, it is entered starting from the 
lowest denomination, like penny, nickel, dime, but I want to start going through the largest one, like 100. Okay, and the reason I do that is because now I want to calculate if I have enough money to give the change right here. And to do that, I'm just going through all the money I have in the uh, cash register, starting from the 100 bills. Okay, so I am doing a for each to iterate through all the uh, filtered CID. Now the element here will be um, will be an array which will store an array like this one, penny 1.01. It will store the currency denomination and the value we have at the cash register. So the currency and so element is an array with only two elements. The first element is the currency and the second one is the value we have. Okay, so um, I'm getting the currency here and the currency sum I am uh, initiating right here and it will have the value for that uh, currency at the cash register. And I, of, I multiply by 100 so I can work with whole numbers. Okay. Now CID sum, which is being calculated, I, ju I just started it at zero, and since we're going through all the uh, currencies in the cash register, I am just adding it to the CID sum, and when we finish this for each array, we will have the sum of uh, the sum of money we have in the register. Okay. Now I have initiated this amount variable here, initiated at zero. Okay, and Inside, I have a while uh, loop inside this uh, for each, inside this for loop. What I am doing here, I am change, I am checking if change sum is still larger than or equal to currency unit currency. So currency unit is this object here. So when I am at the first iteration, I am checking if I have to return a change sum which is larger than or equal to, let's say, $100. And I am also checking if the currency sum, if I have uh, cur sum, is measuring how much I have of that denomination in the register. If I still, because if I don't have any left in the register, then we cannot pay, we cannot give it as change, of course. So I need these two conditions to be true for the loop to go through. Now the amount will be. Uh, the amount of this currency denomination I am getting from the register for the change. So I am increasing every time uh, the change sum is still larger than the uh, the value of the denomination, I am adding. For example, in the 100, if I have to return a $200 change, I am going to, uh, have to take two $100 bills. Okay, so it will go through uh, two iterations in this while loop. And the change sum, every time we add the $100 bill to the amount we want to return, we uh, decrease it from the change sum. So now we have only $100 to, to get uh, to complete our change sum. So that's why we decrease the change sum by, by the value of the denomination we are adding. And the currency sum, of course, is also being decreased because we are taking from the register. Okay? And if the current sum goes to zero, then we don't have any more money from the denomination to take. I know it's a bit uh, more confusing, but we have to cover all these cases. Now, after this while loop has finished, uh, for one it, so for one iteration of the for loop, inside the while loop we go through and take as many uh, as many bills or as many coins from one denomination as we can. Now here we check if the amount is different from zero, we push it into the changes with the currency name and the amount divided by 100, since we want to give now the real value. So that means that uh, when we go through some denominations in the cash register, for example, maybe we don't need $100 because we need to change, uh, we need to give a change of only $2. Then for the $100, we just go through it the while loop 
uh, doesn't we don't go through with the while loop and we don't want to push it into the chain since we don't want to say I'm going to give zero one hundred dollars we just want to get the denominations that we want to return so I am pushing into the change array only the, the denominations that I'm going to return okay so and of course if the amount is not a zero for example if I have to return $200 bills I'm going to um, push into the change array for example the currency 100 and the amount uh, 200 so we have $200 in $100 bills okay after we go after this for each loop and while loop then we have the change now now we go through the different cases so if change sum is larger than zero that means that we couldn't complete our change for whatever reasons. We don't have enough money in the cash register, or maybe we need to return 50 cents, but we have only a $100 bill, so we cannot return $100 bill. And then we just need to return the status insufficient funds. And the change is just going to be an empty array. And here we have an else if. If the change sum is to zero and the change sum check is equal to CID sum, so that means that the change sum is zero. So that remember that the change sum is always decreasing here and it will be zero if we have uh, already uh, created the whole of the chain, the change from the money in the cash register. But if also the change sum check, which was the copy we created right here, the original change sum is equal to the CAD sum so that means that we have uh, the exact same money we need for change in the cash register it means that after we give this change we don't have any more money left the status will be closed and the change will be equal to the CAD since we are returning everything we have in the cash register we are giving it as change and else so else will be the cases where change sum is equal to zero so we have paid the change but we still have money in the re register the status will be open okay so we need to return the status an object with the status and the change okay guys so I know it is a bit more confusing but this project um, needed you to cover more cases now here is the one of the tests let's as you can see, we give to the cash register the uh, the price is 19.5 and the cash is 20, so we need to return as change 0 0.5 dollars, and this is the amount of money we have in the cash register. Okay, so what is it, what is it doing in this case? In the cash register, we have exactly 0 0.5 dollars in pennies so and everything else is zero so it will go into this one so we're going to return close since we return the 50 cents we had in the cash register and we're closed we don't have any more uh, to give as change in the cash register and we need to return the CAD as the change let's run the tests perfect now guys uh, this was the last one from the um, algorithm data structure challenges uh, it was a long one make sure to check out all of my videos if you want to see how I solved um, the exercises and I'm also going to put everything into my github so the, so the code for this exercise and for all the others is going to be on my github page I'm going to put the link in the description uh, thanks again for watching. I will continue with the free code camp series and with many more videos. Thanks again. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like uh, button, share, and support the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.